period between the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait and the coalition offensive against it was a huge mishmash of diplomatic messages, intelligence gathering, and military preparations. The coalition was pretty concerned about fighting the Iraqis in a ground war. It was believed that, after their eight-year war with Iran, they were all battle-hardened and highly skilled veterans. The Americans in particular, meanwhile, mostly weren't. Many were no more than 20 years old and had never been in a war before. The American commanders weren't going to be taking any chances, and prepared themselves for taking 20,000 casualties. The coalition was most worried about fighting the Republican Guard. These were known to be the better equipped, better motivated, and better trained part of the Iraqi army. Even when it became clear to the coalition that the regular army was mostly too demoralised to put up more than token resistance after six weeks of being bombed, concern about the Republican Guard still remained. For instance, Lieutenant General Franks delayed the advance into the village of al on the night of February 25th because he was worried that the Republican Guard might counterattack him in the dark and cause havoc. As the Americans saw the Republican Guard as a big problem, that meant they had to do something about it. The main plan was to try to kill as many of them as possible with air power before the ground war began. Schwarzkopf then was a little shocked to find that the draft plan for the air campaign hardly included them as a target at all, and he personally had them added to it. Schwarzkopf's hope for the air campaign was to reduce the capability of the Iraqi military by 50% which means killing, wounding, damaging, destroying and demoralising, or routing, half of their men and machines. The Republican Guard was going to receive a large amount of the attempt. But, over in America, the Secretary of Defence Dick Cheney had a different idea. Military planning is such that every single scenario is accounted for, even ones which will very likely never happen. So, the Americans were definitely going to have multiple plans for fighting Iraq. In October 1990, Cheney commissioned a very reluctant chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Colin Powell, to study the possibility of taking out the Republican Guard with nuclear bombs. Cheney wasn't thinking seriously about it, but he felt it would be useful information if things went bad, and was generally just quite curious to know what would be needed to do it. Powell and his team set to work. In the end, they found that perhaps 17 tactical nuclear bombs would be needed to destroy just one division. So to take out the Republican Guard's Second Corps alone, would need at least 21 tactical nukes. Thankfully, the Americans did not use this nuclear plan, but the Republican Guard were instead subjected to around 5,500 bombing raids for six weeks. In the end, most of the Republican Guard was either wiped out in the ground campaign, such as the Tawakalna Division at 73 Easting, or withdrew back to Iraq intact. <laughs> 